Well, here we go again. As you can see, here's a little glimpse back. This is what we did the last video. We flipped it over to prepare to start doing the bottom. You can check that out at the link up there in the upper right. And uh, we're going to give you a little glimpse. This is what we're going to be working on this week. We kind of uh, tuning the chines here. Got a little plain work going on there. And uh, the scarfs and all. Some more. Some more. Just trying to get everything ready uh, to start putting fiberglass down and... Uh, keep this thing moving forward going to try you know I'm going to actually put it out there going to try and have a goal for having uh, fiberglass on by the end of January but uh, so here we go we're going to run through this kind of on time lapse here we're just uh, doing a little work here where the sides of the hull actually were kind of overlapping the chines a little bit so to be able to make this glass and all roll up from the hull sides onto the chines and all I'll probably explain that more when I go to glass it but um, I'm just trying to tune all this up because it's, uh, you know, like everybody keeps saying, it's a whole lot easier to fare wood than it is to try and come back and fare and putty and fare fiberglass and epoxy and all that. So I'm trying to do all of this in an effort to make it easier to fare. And here it is. I'm using that little scraper that I've talked so much about. It's just a little Harbor Freight scraper. It's just real nice. And, you know, right here on this pad, I'll talk about this in a little while, just where that plywood was a little proud. And, and I actually used that plane a little bit right there on where that fiberglass meets the transom. I was kind of focused more on the wood than the fiberglass. It's not exactly the right tool. The power plane would have probably been better there. But, uh, you know, I'm just taking that little uh, hand plane there and I'm trying to clean up these scarfs and these edges. And uh, that scraper, with that scraper, you see me going down the side and down this channel. All I'm trying to do is everywhere where I had those, where I drilled holes to use zip ties to stitch it together, all of the grain and all that is just kind of blown out the back side of it, right? So I just take that little scraper and it, it flattens all that out really nice, does a good job. And then as I'm doing that, I feel bigger stuff. And then I take that, that hand plane and this it's really handy. Uh, I've got it really, really shallow. Um, I know I could use a power plane here, but the way I figure it is uh, I'm a lot less likely to get into big trouble with that hand plane, just be and, and especially having it cutting really, really thin. I mean, it is just barely shaving it. And, uh, so, you know, here it is. You could see the dust. Most of it's dust. There wasn't a whole lot of clippings and whatnot. And then uh, I just grabbed this little random orbital sander and I'm on the tops there. All I'm trying to do is soften those edges because I'm gonna come back in there all these gaps that you'll see in the holes or whatever so everything under glass um, will have thickened epoxy packed into it so that it will be one solid unit with the epoxy and the wood and all from the inside that's all sealed so everything there won't be any voids anywhere uh, intentionally for sure you know there may be some by mistake but pretty cool you can see that it's where the through hole fittings will come through right there on each side of the keel pad and uh, also right there where all my scarfs are there's obviously epoxy in there and I'm just trying to make sure that all that's roughed up this is about a 40 or 60 grit uh, pad on that random orbital just trying to kind of rough it up and you can see I just take and hit my little uh, my little scarfs there and it works out pretty good Yeah, once again, you see my little neighbor come by. He's he's uh, he's real curious to the project, and uh, he comes by a lot. And I, you know, I'm glad he does. Every time you can see, I stop, and once again, I put a little bit more of it in here. But generally, uh, you know, he must have sat here for 35, 40 minutes, something, just looking at it. It's a lot of fun. All right. Well, as you probably saw through that time lapse there. I've been working on it. Uh, just a couple of things I've been working on. Um, this this piece of plywood here, where I come up to this center pad was a little bit proud. So I just took this little block plane or whatever kind of plane it is, hand plane. And I worked on it to make sure that that's flat going out there. And all I'm trying to do, all I'm working on now is trying to handle some of these things so that uh, it'll, it'll I probably maybe make my life easier when I'm fair. I've got all of this. I'm fixing to take my little trim router and you'll see that it's got a little, uh, I think this is a quarter inch uh, that may be a half inch round over bit. And uh, I'm gonna round all this over because I've got this, this fiberglass is gonna be coming over here and wrap it onto the transom. So everywhere along here, like all along uh, on the chines and everything, I'm gonna, I'll be rounding that over. I've also uh, 
had my little plane and uh, been trying to kind of tune this up a little bit. Some of this, some of these sidewalls were a little bit proud on this chine and it wasn't all perfect as you can see here. There's a little bit of a gap. So once again, I just kind of took that plane and uh, smoothed all this down so that that plane is nice and smooth. And then I just, just kind of had a little bit of a hump in it. So I just kind of smoothed all that down. Nice splinter right there. You know, kind of kind of tune this up a little bit here. So because that, that, that was a little proud, had a hump. And this chine here is the same thing. You know, just kind of, you can see right here where I really had to plane on this a little bit. To get it uh to get it hopefully it'll all it'll, it'll make it all easier to fare in the end i'm trying to do everything i can now with this wood so that it uh it it'll it'll be easy i've come back and all of my little uh all of my scarfs and all i've, I've planed those and make sure that they're as flush as possible and then as you can see on the other side it's all roughed up i sanded it so that we go to put this epoxy on there it'll all bind good you know, once again, you can see this chine. Let me see if I can give you, you can kind of see how fair it is running down through there. It looks pretty good. So, some of the angles of the boat are pretty neat to look at. You know, I've shown pictures of this, this little view here. Um, but it really does look good when you come up here and you look down that chine and see how fair it is all the way to the end so as i'm looking at it here i can see there's a there's a hump right there i'll have to deal with that later but that's what i've been doing is now i'm gonna take like i said i'm gonna get set up take this little round over bit and i'm gonna just run it along this edge here and it'll put me a nice little round over all the way across it and i'll show that and then i'll come back and Maybe give a little close up of it. The router. Anybody who hadn't used the router, it's got a little arrow on it that says that this bit's going to rotate that way. So you always want to be having the bit strike into whatever it is you, you're, you're uh, at least that's how I was always taught. You always want to be striking into whatever it is you're trying to cut. So as you'll see, that's why I will go that, I'll come up from this side and then go that way so that that, that thing is always striking on the downstroke there. I think that I'm going to hold it flat this way, but this may be the best route. We're going to give it a shot. Here's a little behind the scenes footage where I get this other camera set up and you'll get a different angle here. You can also see right here where I changed the depth of the router because you can see that first six, eight inches there, uh, you can see the little shoulder cut and then now I'm having trouble really getting it to cut because I just moved it just a little bit. Uh, but you can see the difference in how it's cutting and why. right there where that wheel is rolling and it's hard to because it's not cutting I'm struggling to make sure I have it flat but what it is because of the angle that transom is about 10 or 12 degrees it's got it a little a little wonky and it just won't cut right probably easiest to see right here you can see that that just put a little round over right here you can see that the, the bit was a little bit too deep, so it leaves that little shoulder. And so here, I shallowed it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'll probably come back with a sander, because I don't think that's gonna be enough radius. So I may come back with a sander and just help shape this a little bit, put a little bit more round over on it. 
or I may play with the bit. Um, maybe it's not deep enough. Uh, you can see it started to get in the shoulders a little bit, which is what happens when you get that look too far. So, may just try and uh, that's a that's a hand plane uh, slash camera holder. So. Kind of see it. It's pretty good here when it gets pretty flat, but I'm gonna have to check it. Maybe give it another shot. Oh, that's the problem. I got, I got some stuff there to clean up. See, this is all the stuff I want to make sure is nice and clean. It's a little bit of epoxy. I don't want to be running fiberglass and have to deal with stuff like that. So I'm gonna keep going. So here it is. I've just taken that little uh, hand plane where you saw that epoxy, and I'm just. With this, with this hand plane, it just shaves it, and so it makes sure that you're not, you know, that epoxy is so much harder than the wood, um, that when you start sanding, the wood will actually get eaten down, but that epoxy will stay proud. So it's uh, something I'm trying to, I'm, I've had to learn, it's just that little hand plane, it's, it's very handy like that scraper. The scraper does a good job too. But here it is, I'll, you know, I talked about that little, uh, the little shelf or whatever that I had on the edge of that, where I'd router that, um, transom there and I just take this little sander just to run this in time lapse it looks like I'm moving it more you know but the, that wheels turning pretty good uh, so I'm just once again just trying to round this over and soften it so that it's uh, much much smoother yeah and here it is we're running back down this edge this you know you can see that router going there and one of the problems is that angle that angle there is it's, it's not a 90 degree angle so it makes it a little difficult yeah once again i mean sanding sanding there's a lot of sanding and there's a lot more sanding to come but if you look at that really close you can see where it kind of had an edge there and as i run that sander back and forth it, it softens that edge and all I'm trying to do there is you're going to have, right there on that corner, you're going to have that 1208 fiberglass coming up and rolling over there. So, and then here it is, you know, we're, we're, we're on the, uh, what will be the port side of the boat. Um, it is the port side of the boat, but it's odd because it's backwards, because it's upside down. As you can see where it's right here where you got pretty much a 90 degree angle between the china and the hull sides, it, it does a real good job of rounding it over. And I deepened that bit a little bit more so even if it does get a little bit of the shoulder cut, shoulder cut on it, it sands out really nice and uh, helps that transition actually. But because that thing is not at a 90 degree angle, and you'll see it coming up here when the blade's coming at you once it gets close. That's kind of the reason I let this run and you'll see that it's that, that bit is uh, it's it's just not sitting flat. Because it's not a 90 degree angle, it's what I would say is more of an... I guess it's an obtuse angle. It's a little more than 90 degrees coming through there, so that it, the bit doesn't really sit flat, and it gives me a little difficulty. And uh, as I said before, or at least I put in the title, when you're running a router like this, um, safety glasses are a must, because I think even right there, I had a little something fly up underneath the glasses. You can see that there's a ton of dust coming off of this thing and little bitty wood chips, and they're going about 9 million miles an hour. Once again, I told you I deepened that bit on that router, so it's got a little bit of a shoulder cut there on the sides where it's where the bit's actually technically it's a little bit too deep. Um, but trying to do that to help use that router to cut to cut a nice little uh, radius around that edge, and then I'm actually going to pick up this block plane again or this hand plane, I, a plane. I'm going to start calling it a plane or an airplane. I'm going to get it wrong all the time. And I come back and once again, just same thing, just trying to soften. You'll see me rotate it up and down, and it is just barely shaving that stuff over there. You can see. So that's about all for this week. So hang in there and see what's coming up next time. We're going to get after it there. Try and get some fiberglass on this thing and try and get it put back up right by the end of January. <laughs>